video we're going to talk about analog to digital conversion. And that is just converting a range of voltage from zero volts to a voltage reference. So why would we want analog to digital conversion? First of all, our microcontroller only, only understands digital information. But many devices out there, such as sensors, they only provide voltage information in a range of, say, 0 volts to 3.3 volts, for an example, or 0 volts to 5 volts. And it can be anywhere in between. So how do you make this communication happen within the microcontroller? In the microcontroller, there are three ladies, and they're sitting in their chair, and they have a switchboard. This is Mrs. Digital. And this is Mrs. PWM. And this is Mrs. ADC. These three ladies, all they do in life is listen to information coming from the outside world. Mrs. Digital can only handle zeros and ones. Mrs. PWM, she has a little stopwatch. And what she does is she listens for pulses for a one, and she listens for a zero whenever she hears a zero. She starts, the she starts the stopwatch. When she hears a one, then she stops the stopwatch and tells you the time on that stopwatch. Mrs. ADC is real flexible. Mrs. ADC, she has a pile of numbers in her pocket. One pile of numbers is zero to 255, and the other pile of numbers is zero to 1024. These things that she has in her pocket are in the form of chips, just little round coin-like things. But she only has either 255 or 256 of them, or she has 1024 of them. This is actually 0 to 123. This is actually 0 to 1023. This is her 8-bit mode, and this is her 10-bit mode. And what she listens for is a voltage between 0 and some voltage reference that you give her. Mrs. PWM can only understand zeros and ones, but she knows how to time between the zero and ones. And Miss Digital, she can only understand 0 and 1, which is 0 volts and 5 volts. Today we're going to be talking about Mrs. ADC, but these are the three main ways you can give information to a microcontroller. You can give it to Miss Digital in the form of zeros and ones or 0 volts and 5 volts. You can give it to Miss PWM in the form of a timing between pulses. And you can give it to Mrs. ADC in a range of voltages. A means analog, in an analog range of voltage. The range depends on what you select. It could be zero to some volts, let's say five volts. And she'll give you a number corresponding to the voltage. So let's talk about Miss ADC in a little bit more detail. And we know she has this control panel that has input-output communication to you. You communicate into a pin, and this pin is connected to her control panel. Miss ADC will receive your voltage like its currency up to the reference voltage. In 8-bit mode, Miss ADC will only give you 255 chips because that's all she has. If you give her the amount of voltage that is equal to the reference voltage, she'll give you 255 chips. If you give her zero volts, she'll give you zero chip. And she'll give you any proportion in between. For instance, if you give her 2.5 volts, she'll give you 128 of her chips. In other words, if you divided the reference voltage by the number of chips she has, you'll find out the, the amount that the chip is worth in voltage. In the case of five volts, the chip would be worth 0 0.01953 volts. This can also be called the precision in 8-bit mode. If Miss ADC was in 10-bit mode, then a five volt reference would be equal to 1024, or she would give you back 1024 chips. So the precision would be five volts over 1024, which would be equal to 0 0.0049. Using what we've learned about um, understanding Miss ADC, which is located in this area, and what we've learned about voltage dividers and using potentiometers to create the voltage divider, we can create a a way to show the voltage, the actual voltage out into an actual digital number. You can see when I move the potentiometer, the number rises. When I move it back, the number decreases. Let me show that to you close up. I'm going really slowly with this potentiometer. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to find a spare area of the, the breadboard. I'm going to place the potentiometer onto the breadboard. 
Then I need to take the, the center lead, which will have our V out, and then we're gonna put it to the ADC1 pin. This is the first pin for the analog digital converter. And it's opposite the number one pin. So I'm just gonna put it to the center pin here. And then I need to take the um, one of the leads, I'm gonna take that to plus, and the other lead, I'm gonna take it to minus. So we have our voltage divider. Okay, that's going to the plus. Now we need one to the minus, to the ground. Okay, so we have our voltage divider set up and we have it going to the ADC pin number one. We also need to power the analog to digital converter. And, the, and the, these pins are 32, 31, and 30. 30 is the actual five, it needs to receive the, the VCC or the voltage we have coming into the, the microcontroller. And that's generally just connected to the, the power rail. The pin number 31, which is located right here, is the ground pin, and we just have to connect that to ground. So that we have the VCC in ground, we have our two pins to power the analog to digital converter. And then we have another pin here, which is number 32. And the pin number 32 is where we get our voltage reference. This is the, uh, the voltage that will be the top of our measurement. It would be the five volts or the 3.3 volts or whatever we are using for the voltage to measure our other device that's gonna be having also a top voltage. In our, in our voltage divider, we're gonna be going from the zero, which is the, the ground, up to the, the, the five volts, is, which is what I have it connected to, five volts. Just like the other side, we have a, a capacitor, a um, 100 nanofarad capacitor or 0.1 UF capacitor. 0.1 microfarad capacitor. We uh, we need to do that also between um, pins 30 and 31. Let's go ahead and do that first. So let's put a 100 nanofarad capacitor between pins 30 and 31. Let's take pin number 30 and we're going to connect that to our power rail. And we'll take pin number 31, which is our ground, and we'll take that to ground. According to the application notes for the ADC and making sure that there's no noise, this capacitor is part of noise reduction. And the reason why we're putting a capacitor here for noise canceling <clears throat> is because we're going to be using the AVCC pin and we're not going to use the AREF pin um, for our top end of measurement. We're going to set that internally with programming to state to the analog digital converter that we want the AVCC pin to be the reference. We can also use the the reference pin number 32 to set our reference if we have a different voltage th than what we have on the actual board. But since we are using the AVCC pin for the reference, we need to make sure that that is the, as quiet a pin as possible. So we're putting the capacitor there. And also, um, we could be putting the um, inductor there, but I don't have an inductor to use, and this circuit is working fine without it. If it was a critical circuit um, that is being used for situations where safety was a concern, I would be using the inductor in that case. The capacitor is being used to filter any noise from the voltage. The inductor would be trying to resist any change in current. So with both the capacitor and the inductor, you would be covering the voltage any fluctuations in voltage or any noise in voltage, and you'd also be covering any um, possible changes in current, making the, this part of the circuit where it receives the voltage reference um, and it, uh, making it more stable.